Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and uh, this week the sermon, uh, we're going to go into Ephesians 5, 15 through 18 and the title of this message is Be Filled with the Spirit. I look around outside and talk to people and uh, I think uh, a lot of us are uh, guilty of wasting our time or at least not redeeming the time like we should because time Time goes by whether you waste it or you don't waste it. And pretty soon you look back and five years has went and ten years has went. And, you know, you can't get back time. So in Ephesians 5.15, we can kind of, this, this text helps us redeem the time. Um, I'll read through it, then we'll go back through and discuss it. Verse 15 through 18 of Ephesians 5. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. All right, 15, it says, Look carefully, then, how you walk. Us as Christians got to be very aware of how we walk. You know, if, if the Bible uses the term walk a lot. What is walk? It's just your life, your Christian life. It's how you live outside. It's how you live every day with Christ. It's what you do every day with Christ. So it says, look carefully then how you walk. So all of us has to... Jesus didn't just save us to give us a ticket out of hell. There's, a, there's more to it than that. There's things, according to the Bible, He's laid out good works for you to do. So every day you wake up, you've got to look carefully how you live. Instead of, you can, you can wipe that term walk out and put how you live. So... Look carefully then how you live or how you walk because, and then it says not as wise, but, but not as unwise, but as wise. So you've got to use a little wisdom every day when you wake up. If God's got things laid out for you, you need to look for them. You don't have to figure it out. All you have to do is wake up. You know, a lot of people, you know, always come to me and ask, how do you know God's will? How do you know God's will? Well, if you keep, your, keep focused on God and keep your nose in the Bible, you'll know what God's will is. All you've got to do is get up. God already has it laid out for you. In Colossians 4 or 5, it says, Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. That means live. Live a wise life in front of all the unbelievers because the days are evil. You don't know what's going to go on out there. So every opportunity you have for Jesus Christ, glorify Him. If you, this is, here's a simple solution to any problem in life. If you don't know how to, if there's a problem in your life, you don't know how to handle it, do whatever glorifies God. That'll give you the answer. Whatever it is. Just ask yourself that question. What will glorify God? So we're supposed to redeem our time. We're supposed to look carefully how you walk. Be careful. Careful. We have to be careful because we forget so often. We get caught up in all the things of life with jobs and people and troubles. So be careful about your time. Walk as wise, not as unwise. Verse 16. Then it says, once you're carefully looking at how you walk or how you live the life, says, 16 says, making the best use of the time. Time wasting. That's probably one of the biggest... Uh, in America, I think it's one of the biggest problems because we have so many distractions over here. And, and every part of the world has distractions. Um... You know, no matter where you go in the world, they have distractions. But you've got to make the best use of your time. We all have to get up. We all have to eat. There's things in life we have to do. Eat, drink water. You, you, if you have a family, you've got to take care of them. But you have to redeem the time from doing that to your free time. Redeem your free time. Be careful. And fully make the best use of your time. And it says, because the days are evil. And no, make the best use of your time means the time part. Concentrate on the time part because you don't know how much time you have. Nobody here has promised a full life. You might have a short life. You might have a long life. But you're supposed to redeem your life. Carefully how you, how you live your life because you might have 10 years. You might have 20. You might have 30. Who knows? So be careful because the days are evil. And the days are getting more evil out there. So you, Christian, have to keep your eyes on the Lord Look carefully how you walk and redeem the time because the days are getting worse and worse and worse. And one of these days, the Lord's going to shut it down and there is no more working. 
So if you're going to build your rewards, Jesus said to work for those things that you can gain in heaven, right? Store up treasures in heaven that does not rust or moss can't destroy. You need to do that by redeeming the time now. Store up for yourself treasures in heaven. But understand, then it says in the end of 17, it says, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You know, People are running around trying to figure out what the will of God is. It's not that hard. All the commands of God in the Bible are the will of God. He says, be holy because I'm holy. That's a command. And that's the will of God for you to live a holy life. If you're not living a holy life, right? If you're not living a holy life, you will not see God. Without holiness, no one will see God. So you have to live a holy life. If you're not living a holy life, don't fool yourself. You don't know God. Another will... Other, to be saved, 1 Timothy 2, 3, and 4, that's another part of God's will for people to be saved. Another part of God's will for people to be spirit-filled, Ephesians 5, 18. Another part is to be sanctified, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. Your sanctification is God's will. You need to grow. You need to read. You need to study to show yourself approved. You need to you know, live a holy life. You need to walk in the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit, the Bible says. There's another part of his will. Be submissive, 1 Peter 2, 13 through 15. You know, and part of God's will, and I know people don't like to hear this, but it's part of it is suffering. 1 Peter 2, 20. Part of it is suffering. If you're a Christian, Jesus didn't promise you a, a beautiful life with no problems. In fact, he said in this world you have tribulation, but take heart, he's overcome the world. So he actually promises the opposite. So that's part of it. Another part of his will is to be thankful. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Be thankful. In all things give thanks. Whether your life is good, whether it's bad. You give thanks. And you can say, well, you know what I went through? It doesn't matter. Give thanks. And then you, if it does, you don't know what this person's done to me. It doesn't matter. Give thanks. And again, all of God's commands are his will for you. So you can find His will easy enough for you. If you get up and you don't know His will, glorify God. That's His will. That's what we're, we were saved for. We were saved to tell other people about Jesus Christ, to spread the word. We're saved, we're saved to do many things in the Bible. It's real easy. The will of God is all over in the Bible. But if you do this, if you redeem the time, making the best use of the time, and you don't be foolish, but understand what the, then you understand what the will of God is. Clearly, because he has the things laid out for you every day you get up. Then verse 18. It says, do not get drunk with wine. And apparently in Ephesus there was people getting drunk with wine, otherwise he wouldn't have to say this. And obviously when you're drinking, you're not giving the best use of your time if you're getting drunk. And let me remind everybody out there that drinks and gets drunk. The Bible is clear in 1 Corinthians 6 that... No drunkard shall enter the kingdom of God. So if you are a drunk, you won't go to heaven, so repent. Give up your life of sin and come to Christ. Do not, it's a command, do not get drunk with wine. For that is debauchery, the Bible says. And that word debauchery has a note of, in the Greek, being sick. Like an like a incurable sickness. And if you drink too much, you're going to get sick. You'll get sick. And, all and I don't like the term alcoholics or drunks. It's a choice. Alcoholism is, you know, I've heard over and over and over again, it's not a choice, you know. It is a choice, and it's not, it's called being a drunk. You just need to stop. But if you drink too much, you're going to get sick. And it's sick in the head and sick in the body. It does a lot of damage to you. So do not get drunk with wine, which is debauchery. It says, but... Be filled with the Spirit. Now this is, this is the whole, it brings everything down we just, wrote, just read about. It says, but, instead of all everything, but, be filled with the Holy Spirit. This word filled is, in the Greek, it kind of takes a picture of a, of a sail on a boat. When, when the wind hits the sail, it kind of fills the sail and pushes the boat along. That's kind of the idea here. But be filled with the Spirit. The Spirit kind of, pushes you along. He fills you and pushes you along. And how do you be in step with the Spirit? It's just to keep up with the Spirit. The Spirit, the Spirit moves. You know, if, if you, when you're saved, the Spirit comes inside to live. And He guides. We just got to keep in step with Him and not override Him and do our own will. So if you turn to me to Romans 13. 
Romans 13, uh, verses 13 and 14. <clears throat> it says, let us walk properly as in the daytime. You know, most wicked sin or sin is done at night, not in the day. People walk properly. Even, even bad sinners usually walk properly during the day when everybody can see them. It says, not in orgies or drunkenness. The Bible says, do not get drunk. Not in sexual immorality and sensuality. Not in quarreling and jealousy. And it says here, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Here, if you're going to be filled with the Spirit, the same thing is, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you put on Jesus Christ? You read the Bible. You not only read it, you obey it. Once you start obeying it, you start making every decision in life. You filter it through God and through all the Scripture. You filter everything through the Scripture. That's how you put on Jesus Christ. You use the Word that's grafted in your mind. You use the word, and as you, you keep filtering things through God's word, that's being filled with the Spirit. That's, the Spirit's carrying you along. You're walking in the Spirit. You're moving ahead. You're putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says here to make no provisions for the flesh. A lot of times when we sin, we get as close to sin as we can, and we try not to sin, and we, we kind of put our foot in the water. It says make no provision for, for sin, for the flesh. If you make provision for your flesh, you're going to sin. So don't tempt yourself. According to James chapter 1, we are tempted by ourselves. So make no provision for the flesh. You know, the title of this is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're supposed to walk as wise, redeeming your time because the days are evil. Walk as wise. Remember, the Bible says be filled with the Holy Spirit. And how do you do that? Obedience. Obedience is what fills you with the Holy Spirit. The Word. Be obedient to it. Walk in the Spirit. If your life is full of sin, you're grieving the Spirit of God. You just stop, repent, confess your sins, turn the other direction and come, come to Christ, ask Him for forgiveness, and get your mind into the Word. And be filled with the Spirit because it, this is not a long, long process. It's going to happen in a few seconds. Be filled with the Spirit. Get His mind, get His Word in your mind and start making decisions through His Word. Through the principles of this book. But in order to know the principles, you have to study. So Christian, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Or, in other words, be put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And walk in this world outside and show the world who Jesus Christ is. And tell them the true gospel. Repent from your sins. Jesus Christ came. He died. Come to Him. That's how, you, that's how you get your sins forgiven. He has the power to forgive sins. Deny yourselves. Pick up your cross. Follow me. Point out when you hear error, point out truth. That's how you glorify God. So be filled with the Spirit. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.